debunking some of the spiritual topics that a lot of people may have misunderstood or either a misconception about them. Hey guys, so I'm just going to do a video here on some misconceptions and um, misunderstandings on some certain spiritual topics. And the first one that I channeled in um, is uh, everybody has uh, abilities, right? And so a lot of people think or negate or deny that they have them. And that is either because of their belief systems, um, they've been punished in the past for having them. And so they have fears or they've been taught, you know, about uh, not using your abilities because of religion. And the purpose of that is so that way you don't use them and then you use that, them. You don't use your own ability. You use them to bring that information for you. So it's it's a separation uh, from your own divine connection and your spiritual truths and your, your source. And that's why they tell you not to use your uh, psychic abilities, right? And so... They lead you away from your true self. Um, and so there's a lot of reasons why people will negate their spiritual gifts, but we all have them. And they range from different levels, your intuition, your knowing, um, your psychic seeing, your psychic hearing, your telepathy, uh, energy healing. These are all natural gifts based on who you are as a divine being. Um, that are, is in here, the human form. And of course, the play of life here is to be human, but we are uh, spirit, right? So our spirit comes along for the journey and you can't separate your abilities from your spirits, right? It's, it's a part of the whole that you make up, right? On all different levels. And so to say that you don't have any abilities is incorrect. Um, it's just your level of awareness and open to them and receiving them and being okay with who you truly are behind this physical form and your belief systems. So basically, um, if you are negating your abilities and you're negating yourself of who you truly are, basically is what that's saying. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just do a little channeling what I did on that topic. It says everybody has abilities. People think they are special when they have the abilities, but they're not because everybody has them. And so not, nobody's special, right? It's just whether you're allowing them because they have the abilities and some don't. Some are just dormant and some are not uh, allowing. Um, some people work with them and then some don't, right? And it's allowing yourself to be okay with yourself um, and having that and acknowledging who you are beyond this physical form, right? Because you're not a whole being if you're not, right? And so some acknowledge them and then some don't. And it, it's not a win or lose situation. It's fight or flight, basically. And when you're in those stages, you're locked into the bottom totem, right? Uh, the totem is like your chakras. You're locked into the bottom states of your reality, which is more the survival, you know, the continuum, you know, trying to get somewhere instead of evolving allowing yourself to rise up to have those abilities awakening because the more you rise up um, into your divine uh, you know divinity uh, you're you're going to open up to more of your abilities right and so yes when you are opening up to these it's not that you're being attacked for it if you feel like you're being attacked because you are opening up to it you're, you're having to get rid of your fears that are surrounding it Right? So a lot of people think, because I'm opening it up, I feel like I'm being attacked or um, uh, whatever it is, this evil person, or there's nothing outside of you, right, for one. And then <clears throat> there's no devil, there's, there's none of that. Um, it's our own creation, right? So when we're opening up, if we have fear wrapped around it for generations and centuries, we're going to have those uh, attached to those uh, abilities you know, that we're trying to work on. And so, yes, you're going to have some of that come up so you can see those fears and move through them and then set your boundaries, right? And so 
just knowing that that's not what that is. Like when you're feeling those things, when you're opening, cause I've been through it, I went through it. Um, and once I moved past that, having that, because like when I started meditating, I was starting to feel things, um, you know, and my abilities were starting to open, but it's all those things that I've collected, not just myself, but through my lineage and my family in religion that these are bad, you know, that's evil and there's devil. And, and it was these beliefs that were surrounding that. And so when you're working on something, you're going to have that come up. And so you can get rid of that. Right. And so then you're free from that. Right. So that's all that that is. But if you're not using them and you want to, then do it. And if you don't, and if you do, and you don't want to, then don't, right. If you're not feeling comfortable nobody's forced to do it, but you're not being true to yourself when you're not, right. You're going to feel like you're not a whole being. Um, and that's part of why a lot of people don't, they don't feel like they're their true selves, you know, cause they're not being their true selves because when we pass over and we get rid of this body, we use those abilities. We use telepathy. We use knowing. We use, we use sensing. We don't use what we use here in this physical form. So you can't take that and separate that from you because your spirit and soul comes into the body, right? So really think about these things. Like contemplate them. Think them, think them out. Think them through. Because a lot of things that people say to you because of religion and things like that don't make sense. But if you think about them then, then it, it'll, it'll make sense and it'll, it'll show you that it's untrue, right? Don't just take people's word for stuff. Um, so it's all up to you and what you're doing and what you want. Uh, but the more you do, the better you get at it. And you have to clear away the, the negativity, the falsehood about your uh, abilities, right? And just be okay with that. Um, you got to face your fears, you know what I mean? Um, and so just like anything, it's the spiritual muscle, No um, one might say. Uh, not one that goes away or never has one. It is the built-in system, not like an instrument or a painting. So <clears throat> you have, um, it's a spiritual muscle. So the more you use them, the more you get better at it, right? And so <clears throat> it's like anything else. Um, it's, it's an ingrained, innate ability that we all have on the different levels of awareness. So like I said, um, your telepathy, your knowing, your uh, psychic abilities, your psychic hearing. Um, and, and it's kind of like having an innate ability to uh, do like painting or play an instrument. We all have a divine purpose, right? And so um, it comes along with that. You know, it's no different than having your innate purpose that you came here to do. Um, and it's just so, you know, recognizing that and awaking it within yourself, right? So it's a natural cause of who you are being. Uh, when you say that you don't and you, you don't let it in or go dormant until you're ready to use them or access them, which is by choice, you know, it's all by choice. Um, if you don't want to or you're fearing it, then of course it's not going to happen for you. And so when we're not using them, they go dormant. They never leave you, right? It's just there until you're ready and willing to use them, right? So these are tools of life that you can use, and they help you navigate life, right? Because if you're cutting yourself off from your innate abilities, that's like saying, um, no, but you're not going to receive the guidance from your spirit guides because that's what they use. They use your intuitive abilities. And so if you're cutting yourself off from them, it's going to be hard for you to connect, right? Um, so if you're um, trying to talk to your spirit guides, things like that, or get direction or guidance or help with anything from the universe, if you're not using your abilities, you're not going to receive. So um, you're kind of hurting yourself in the process, right? Instead of letting other people do it for you, like the churches and the religion and the belief systems and things like that, um, you're kind of at your own uh, wit's end, you know what I mean? Um, but it's by choice, you know, you can use them or not. Um, you don't have to use them, but you can if you want to. It's not a requirement in life, but know that they exist for everyone. So even when you think they aren't, but most choose to use them in life um, as a navigating tool um, in their life, you know, to help them manifest, things like that. So you basically really need to have them um, to get the best out of life. Because right? that's who we are. It's, it's our divine connection. That's how we communicate with the other side or how we communicate um, with the universe or source, right? When we cut ourselves off, then that's when we have issues. 
Um, and that helps us to navigate through life. Uh, we are living, for instance, our intuition and inner guidance is an intuitive ability, right? Uh, those red flags, those intuition, gut feelings, that's your uh, intuitive ability. Um, inner insights, uh, knowing, higher guidance is channeling information. Psychic abilities to see beyond the realm, which is to see truth, not the illusion, because we live in the world of illusion. Um, and it's all what you choose it to be, so nothing is different than anyone else. It is just choosing to use them. We are all a part of the bigger network. And, and so we all have the abilities to use our skills, our innate abilities, if we want to. If everybody didn't have them, then we would be like saying, you're not allowed to get help from your guides um, through using your abilities, which is not, it's not bad, right? Um, you just have to know if it's, it's coming through based on your fears or on, on a higher state of reality, right? Which is your true self. Um, because our fears can create these um energy forms right and so if we're creating energy forms around that what we've been told or from our past experiences then that's what we're going to experience when we go to open them right like i was talking about it's just moving through your fears on it um and and so you are packed with abilities and you just choose to either bury them or not, use them and what, for whatever reason, but you're 100% guided in life and that is through your intuitive senses and abilities, right? So use them. Um, share my, uh, and then, um, so just to share uh, the experience on the near death experience, uh, like when I had gone over and I did a little video on this before on like one of the, the ch and part of the, um, the book, The I Am Discourse. And I was explaining that when I had had the near-death experience and I went back home and I was in this big black void, um, I couldn't see anything. I didn't have vision, right? I didn't have anything else because it was a black void. You, there was no lights when I first left the body. And then when the light did come, right, uh, the beings and the lights, which I, they told me are the light, the light being, the bringers, the light bringers, um, or the light riders, I forget what they call themselves. Um, they come with the lights uh, to bring you to where you need to be, right? And so uh, the beings and the light said, you have to drop your physical senses to be on that side. And the minute I did, because I was trying to use my senses, I was in this black void trying to look at my hands and trying to do what I was doing here, um, but you can't do that there because it doesn't exist, right? That's our true senses, right? And this is here in this, in this form reality when we take this up. Um, so being in the void, the minute I dropped my physical capabilities, right? Um, I was able to then maneuver through on that side right? And so everything was just telepathy. Everything was just knowing, right? Everything was just psychic. Um, and so it's a whole different ball game on that side, which we can have here when we work on them, right? But it's because we're in the physical body, the body has picked up um, this perception and reality of our experience towards that. And that's through being told that or past experience, maybe we've been burned for using these abilities or whatever. Um, but it's working through those, you know, so we can utilize them. Um, and so no one gets stuck here. Oh, going on to number two. So uh, number two. Number two. Uh, no one gets stuck here after death, wandering the halls of the in-between realms of the eternal death of hell. <laughs> that's a religious philosophy that's just rubbish um, to get you to stay in line with their teachings and in control. Um, first, you know, they don't let you want or want you to use your own abilities. And then they do the fear mongering um, about, you know, how um, if you're not obeying their rules, you're going to burn in hell for eternity, right? Which is untrue. Uh, when, when truth is your spirit or soul leaves the body at all times without even knowing it during sleep hours, during waking hours, which is dreaming and that and the daydreaming is just projection, right? You're projecting yourself into that creating, it's creation, manifesting. 
uh, during times of suffering and terror, during when you're having um, maybe an accident or maybe an operation um, or um, you're being abused, your, your spirit and soul actually goes outside of the body, right? It's not in the body when these things are going on, and but you still have the observance of it because you are connected from that point, but you're also outside of the body observing it. A lot of people have the near-death experiences that explain this. And then during the times of a near-death experience, you go out, right? During times of just simply being in meditation, the state of you start going out of the body, right? It's And you're just letting go of the body. That's where a lot of healing comes in and your communication, your abilities start opening up and waking up because you're no longer in the mind, you're in the body um, with that attachment. Um, and so that's presence of itself and it is when you uh, don't exist. So when you're actually in meditation, your physical form doesn't exist and your spiritual self exists, right? It's the opposite. And so there's many times that the spirit or soul doesn't exist in the body regardless if it's day or night and it's not um, at any point going to hell, um, it always goes back home when you when you are um, after this life, right? You don't get stuck up in this holding cell or hell for eternity and things like that. That's um, that's a false teaching. Um, so with that, again, going back to my near death experience, um, I I automatically just went to the the void. And then the light bringers came and they took me to the other side, right? And so I had gone, it's not heaven either. It's not like the pearly gates, you know, that's just an illusion of what you're teaching here. And when you teach these things, um, that's going to become a part of our experience afterwards. So we want to be careful what we're uh, allowing into our um, consciousness, right? And so if you're allowing them to teach you these things and you're accepting that as your truth, then you're going to go through those certain situations as you're moving through and having to face those and those fears and those doubts and things like that. And then when you're doing your life review, you have that, you know what I mean? But there's no hell that you go to because God knows I'm not a perfect being in this form and I'm sure I wasn't in the past lives. And so here I am again, reincarnating into another body. And if I was to die and go to hell for eternal, then why would I be here, right? So you, again, you really need to start thinking about these things, what people are trying to teach you and fear and you into believing, you know, about these things, right? Um, it, it just, it's, it, it doesn't really make sense if you think about it. Um, and so it's a misunderstanding to that many have afterlife out of fear and making up stories, which is religion to help you believe in them and take you away from your true divine self, right? And the truth, um, which is part of the story and the experience, of course, but you know, it's like time to kind of drop all that stuff, right? And just live the truth. And so that it says after that, which goes into the spirits that pass over uh, the places that are haunted and energy imprints and those passing over uh, can come back um, as it is uh, all around an intelligence. Everything's an intelligence, right? It's a system that works up and makes up the whole, every bar, bit and piece of it is um, playing out a role, like an, an, an examination of itself to be the experience that it needs to be to create the awareness or the illusion of what is, right? And so it's all part of the whole, it's all intelligence. It all works together on, on different levels. Um, and so uh, the other thing that gets misunderstood is that your family and relatives are your family and relatives are not your family and family and relatives after this life ends, right? Uh, so we go back to source, which is a never ending uh, network of frameworks, right? A lot of people will think, oh, my mother here in this lifetime is going to be my mother forever, right? And then we die because that's what we've been taught. It's untrue. You go, we go back as spirit and soul. We drop the body. We drop the identity. We drop the ego. And they're no longer our, our parents or our loved ones or our, our kids, you know, on the other side. Um, that's just temporary for this space that we're in, playing out the roles, right, to have the experience and the knowledge and the wisdom and, and to learn. Um, because when you have a reincarnation, you're being reborn as a different being, whatever that is, whatever you're choosing to take up, whether you're going to be 
maybe a different an animal. Maybe you're going to choose to be um, another person, and so you're going to have a different parent. And you know what I mean? It's we are not who we are when we pass over. And just like when we come in, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but your kids are physically form body a, a replication of you and your mate however the spirit and soul that uptakes that is somebody who, totally different right it's it's not who you who you think it is right which is an illusion right um so who knows who you have in that body somebody maybe who have created a lot of issues in life for people or animals abusers um, murderers. Um, I'm just putting it out there. It could be true, right? Whoever you were in a past life and you're taking up this body that you're coming into this life form to create something else. Maybe you're changing your ways. You know, you're going to be um, something better who brings something better to this world through the parents because you're taking up the, the DNA and information from the parents to help you be that better person. But you don't know who the spirit and soul is of your child. That's part of the illusion. And so when we die, we leave the body, we become backward source. We become our spirit and soul sense, right? We shed the body. We're no longer the parents, you know? But people are uh, hang on to that, and then they go to mediums, which helps them continue the illusion that they are your parents, right? Or your loved ones or your children when they pass over. And so a lot of people don't want to think about it that way. But, you know, everybody's all about having kids because it's my kid and this is my kid and we're fighting over this and this and that and that. But really, um, it's just the body form um, and the spirit that takes it up isn't, right? So you have that. Um, and so where were we? So as we go back to source, which is a never-ending network of framework and a network of intelligences that we experience when we leave this life in this body, problem is most have been trained into believing you are human in this form and so you believe it is taking up um, with you to the other side which is the farthest from the truth uh, the only reason mediums uh, can recall them is that they are either reading the energy of you and them the memory that's within your framework or what the person was to you in your life storybook right so they're able to read your energy form and vibration and see if they're psychic mediums or if they're clairvoyant mediums, you know, they have the ability to just pick up that in your energy form um, and may not realize that they're actually reading that versus, you know, those who have passed over. Now, it's not to say that um, those who have passed over um, are not going to come back in to um, help you with the healing and letting go process of being okay with them and because there's healing and letting go of the person that you love that's passed over and separation there's a lot of suffering on the side from it so mediums can help you in that um, with the grieving process by calling in the energies of it it's not really the person right so the energies of it is going to come in to help you and they're either reading from your storybook that you have within your framework or from what's being given from the other side to help you it's not that they're really those persons on that side because we get rid of the body and we become other people or other experiences after leaving. So we're never, I'm never going to be Laura on the other side, right? It's only temporary here that I am. I'm going to be something different when I pass over uh, from this lifetime and take up something different, right? And so the parents that I have here now in this um, this lifetime isn't going to be my parents over there and my kids aren't going to be my kids over there and I'm not going to be their mother over there, right? It's just this temporary form that we're taking up the stories and the plays that we're playing out, right, here for this reason and then we move on, right? And so a lot of people get stuck up in that uh, belief system which contributes to the suffering that you're going through thinking that it is because when you know the truth and you don't suffer, it's only when you don't know the truth that you suffer, Right? And so you'll be able to understand that concept. Um, just take a look at it, you know, look at the things in your life that um, you know the truth on, you don't suffer it, right? Because you know the truth, right? It's when you don't know the truth that you suffer. 
right? And that's the experience that we have. So anytime you have suffering, it's not the truth, right? So the only reason mediums can recall them is that they are either reading your energy or what that person was to in the life storybook, or they are actually speaking with the consciousness, which is the memory, the intelligence of what that was. They're not really speaking to that person because they're no longer that uh, as they choose to move forward in their lives. And so they're choosing to take up other lives to play other parts and roles in their movie, right? Because they're moving on because they have other things to do. <laughs> you know, it, and it's nothing personal, right? But we make it personal and related, relative to us, right? Because we're the ones here stuck still having to move on and they're over there past and gone, right? So, so when you're rolling in, <laughs> when you're rolling in the light, which is in front of the camera, which is here, this perception, you're playing a role of identity and attachment. Um, it isn't forever, but you believe it is, which is just an attachment to the outcome of the physical form or preference or perception when it's all temporary just for this lifetime. Um, so we take up different forms, different lifetimes, playing different roles in other lives to other people, to other animals, to other experiences. Um, and so it's a false illusion what people are telling you and what you're believing about lives and passing over to their side. And so we go on to bigger and better things, you know, and um, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, anything personal about you or anybody else, but it's just the way that it is, right? It's just, it's not personal. It's an evolution. It's an intelligence. We make it personal, right? And so it doesn't mean that they can't communicate with the intelligence over there and they'll be able to share what they were and how they were to you in that relationship and to help you heal here, which is part of the role of the mediums, um, because I've done mediumship, I can do mediumship. And so I, I've learned that um, through my journey, right? And I don't dispel anybody of that understanding, right? And so it's a hard for people to come to terms with because, you know, especially if it's somebody you love or you know, have really been close to, Right? They, it's the intelligence that we're talking to when we're bringing the information. It's not actually them in that role, um, if that makes sense. And so it's just to help you to heal and let go and to move on um, so that they can too. Because when you're holding on to them, you're actually um, keeping that energy and vibration of it still connected to you. And so you're still living and playing out the role of the suffering. And so again, if you're suffering, it's not true, right? So when you pass over, you go uh, directly to source, which is the light, and do a life review, and then you choose your new roles um, with others based on what this life resulted in, right? And so this is where I talk about things like on karma. Based on our life, we look at our life review, and then we choose certain areas of our life that we want to work on, and we come back and we become that experience, right? So whatever that is that we're choosing. Um, so they're not forever yours <laughs> and neither are you to who they are or will be something else later, right? So these are just skits that you're playing out in life to have the experience of life. So enjoy it now while you can and make the most out of it. Um, not worry about later, right? With some, because some out of it later with someone else in different ways, right? So they're passing over and going on, like I said. Um, and you never know where life will lead in this afterlife, right? So again, it's just <clears throat> having the understanding and awareness of these, which can help limit your suffering, right? And so again, if you're suffering, it's not true. So take a look at your illusions, right? Because anytime there's suffering, it's not true. It means that you're not in alignment with who you truly are, your truth, right? And so you are, that's the only time that suffering will come in because when you're in alignment with truth you're in alignment with source and source is love and so if it's not love it's not true that makes sense all right on to number three number three there's no hell which is another misunderstood topic there's no hell judgment damnation or suffering after this life only love acceptance and abundance which is the life of truth source alignment with source uh, whether we can all see what we have done in this life, which is a life review, and you get to view it and how it played out as 
how it affected you and others in the life and you get to choose to come back and replay it out or to change it and rewrite the script in different ways so there is actually no karma um, of reaping uh, for what you've created only recreating it and i've talked about that in other videos um, karma is not what a lot of people think it is um, it's a misunderstanding of what that is through teachings and what was at that time of awareness right and so if you can change something that means there's no reaping right and so we can go back and change things um, or change how we are now to change later right and so there's no reaping of anything that's been um, it's just the past it's when we hold on to the past that we're recreating um, and replanting the seeds to create more of it which is karma um, it's not just because we did something we're going to reap it we can change uh, we can fix things we can recreate it rewrite it um, which is going to overwrite what was right and so there's that but anyway um, if you're creating these illusions of fear and things, you're going to face that right um, but there's there's no eternal hell and i just got done talking about that in number two um, and, and so when I went through my, like I said, past the near-death experience, I didn't go through any hell, you know what I mean? I went straight to the void and then to the light. So there are so many um, who don't understand these things and put a bad spin on it, which is from the perception of human um, in alignment to the energy on the planet right now, but it is the process of changing. And so we don't want to offend anyone, but you, will may, you all need to wake up <laughs> out of these dogmatic belief systems uh, ridiculed with fear for others for and your teachings for the only fear you have is the one that you're creating so it doesn't serve you for the only hell you experience is on earth is the earthly realms of being which is the illusion the ongoing uh, change that's taking place right now as it is all being revealed for you to see what you've uh, been working on creating um, and have evolved from which is the point of projection of it which is the place that you're suffering from so as we're um so like this life whatever i've created in this life i go back i do a life review i can pick whatever i want to uh create recreate or take it from a different viewpoint and see from a different person's view or i can do whatever it is that i want to do from that and recreate and make a different life out of that and come back and live that out and then come back and live that out and then come back and live that out and over and over again right as a process um and so it's just the point of view that we're in that we're we're seeing from right for whatever we've created and said with our soulmates what we're going to create right um so if i have an agreement that they're going to be an abuser in my, my life in the next lifetime so that's what they're going to do, right? <laughs> they're going to show up in the divine timing at the right time to do that. And I'm going to live from that space. So um, nothing is without your approval, right? And so there's no hell. There's there's none of that stuff. Um, we all have a part in the play and we're all an ex uh, agreeing to it, right? Basically. Um, and just because we don't remember doesn't mean it didn't actually happen. We didn't agree to it. Right? that's the point of the illusion coming in here and forgetting right so so it doesn't serve you uh only from it doesn't serve you for the only hell you experience is on earth and elsewhere realms of being which is the only ongoing change that's taking place right now as it all is being revealed what we're seeing now is um, everything up to this point is coming up so we can see everything and observe what we've been creating um, for and it's for you to see where you are and evolving not just on an individual level but on a macro level altogether the consciousness of the world right not just your individual world uh, from which it is the point in projection when things are coming up it's it's projecting itself out to you so you can see it right so it, it is the place that you're suffering from from where you're viewing it uh, that you're not aware of yourself that you are creating it to experience over and over again and by not understanding who you truly are beyond this human makeup this form right and so like even when the things are coming up in the world and like the wars how are you perceiving them are you saying i'm on this side am i on this side or am i not on either side and i just want peace throughout the world what 
perception are you coming from? Because that's what you're creating, planting those seeds, right? By having that perception, right? And it's, it's there to show you uh, on the, the screen of the world, you know, where you are in your life, right? How are you uh, being? Are you taking sides or are you condemning somebody, judging somebody? Or are you, you know, just, it doesn't matter who did what and what and when, and I just want peace in the world, right? Where, where are you, right? Are you being the love or are you just, you know, being along with the energy of which side that you're taking, right? And so just taking a look at these things, again, it's just having the awareness and the understanding of who you truly are as love and not this perception of this person as human because when we can do that, we're, we're looking through the eyes of source and we're seeing more on a um, humanist, uh, is the word that they're giving me, perception, you know, a humanity, right? So that's love, right? And so it's all a part of the play in the show. Nothing is made to get you or to beat you down. It is all set up for the upliftment of who we all are as one. And so we're all evolving uh, since there is no, it's only lifting up. There's no failure, right? So there, there's no failure. Um, it's just where you are at the time that you are doing what you're doing <laughs> to get to the next place, right? And it's a stepping stone, right? Um, uh, Abraham talks about kind of a similar topic in manifesting it's like getting from one one stone to the other stone to the other stone getting into one cart into the other car uh, it, it's the pathway right because you can't be there until you're here and you can't be here until you've been there and so it's just the pathway of getting to where we're going right and so it's all evolving and we get caught up in the screenplay of who we think we are right and so we forget yeah, what we're here to do and what we're doing right on to number four. All right, number four. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a short one. Energy can never be made or go instinct. It can only be produced, like produced is re, redone, right? So it can only be changed, manipulated, which is why there is only evolution and there's no karma unless you choose it. So karma doesn't exist because it can be changed if you, and I kind of little talked about that already. If you can, it can. So karma doesn't exist because it can be changed. And if you can change something, that means you don't receive the karma. So it's not actually karma. Um, you're going to receive what you're changing, and then you're going to be able to go from that place, right? So if you're, um, you're red and you're trying to get to pink, you're going to add white, and then you're going to be pink. So you, it's, it's the stepping stones, right? And so it's, it's changing as it is where it is in the choice that you make, which is choices in every moment, right? So we're changing constantly and evolution, right? And so you don't receive the karma as karma is just a result of action. And so every time you take a new action, which is choice, then you're creating something new that you're gonna be receiving. Now, if you keep doing the same things, uh, of course, you're going to receive the same things, right? You got to change uh, what you're doing to receive something different. Um, so there's no real karma as we per se think it is. Um, it's, and so if the action is no more, then the, con the outcome is different, right? And so we can change our karma if you want to call it that, but it's not really that. All right, on to number five. Number five, uh, the other thing is there is no evil and no devil. We create our own suffering, which a lot of people don't want to hear by not understanding ourselves in this realm, how it all works, uh, that we are living in and that we've taken up by choice, forgetting ourselves of who we are when we came in because it's been wiped away. Um, so we can play out the roles and the play of life. And so we lose insight of what is real and what is not real and the realm of illusion. Um, and this is the world of uh, illusion, right? So generally, most don't remember who they are, or why they are even here, uh, which is called the true amnesia. So the memory has been wiped clean as we take on and emerge with the form of being, whatever that is, animal, human, tree, or stone, for ex experience purposes only, right? So when we return to life beyond this realm, we remember ourselves, remember who we are, uh, but not always what we did or where we've been, what we've chosen to do, uh, who we are in this life, hence the life review. The reason for the life review is because 
we don't always remember uh, of that life once we get over there because then we because sh we're shedding everything and so we can be free to look at it from a different perspective which is source perspective over there which is love because once you shed the body you go into the the void and then you go into the light the light bringers bring you to where you're going then you do the life review and you're actually no you've been cleansed and so you're now in the energy of love and you do your life review from there and then you're able to choose if you're choosing to come back and rework it then you're choosing from there that's how that works right that's the life review process so uh, we live double in kind of we live double lives in this reality not just one constantly guided through it by higher beings and we work on many things in this lifetime which is why we shouldn't cut off our um intuitive abilities right because that's our direct connection um those on their side other side the intelligence beings are, are helping us guide us through this life that we're supposed to be working on certain things right and so if we're cutting ourselves off we're going to keep repeating certain things right and so it doesn't help us at all to believe that um, we need to cut off our intuitive abilities that, you know, we're reaping the karma. Um, that's, that's totally not even real, right? <laughs> so, and that's why, like, I, I can be in the space I am in my life because I've worked through all the illusion stuff, right? If it's suffering, it's not real, right? It, it's the illusion, right? If it's not the truth, it's, it's suffering. And suffering is not real, it's it's illusion and so it's like we're living double lives the, the human life and then the spiritual life right and all together right so we live double lives in this reality not just one constantly guided through it by higher beings and we work on many things in each lifetime which is the point of attention which is by attraction right the law of attraction so there are these uh, designated times that we do a lesson in our lives um the rest of the time is left up to you to do with it as you please right and so that is your free will um this is to allow for time uh for this to come together as we may be waiting on others to show up to play their role or to be a part of it um, at specific times and places as agreed on uh, which have certain experiences to play out in the role which is where you get your experiences and the lesson right um, so it's all planned out and rather perfectly um, if you think about it, but most forget it is the game of life because we're playing the role they're playing. And so they suffer the life away and not enjoy it, that what they are living instead of enjoying it, uh, which brings us to the next one, number six. All right, number six, uh, there are no mistakes. Everything is divinely orchestrated in the collective action. Uh, so we are under a lot of misconceptions in this life of the way it is that we are actually living from that we've forgotten where it is that we're being projected from in the form of the illusion as we're all collective beings playing the roles out even the ones we don't want to to be played out which is why most of us is doing it by unconscious action for if you knew it would you right and so thereby the purpose of being unconscious is the act of the play by the unconscious roles in the mind the collective role the point of attraction the ego the identity the purpose to play it all goes along together seamlessly hand in hand for if it didn't then then there wouldn't be one right and so it's the screenplay of life that's being written um, either over and over again or changed again no karma right um and so it's the screenplay of life being played out by many souls coming together as one that we've agreed on in communion um which is coming together not communion and religion um, so many souls uh, bring being themselves who they choose to be and so it goes on and one play after another life after life never ending so the screenplay is never ending life of countless lives that it's been played out over and over again until countless lifetimes endless times so on and on evolution goes on forever you know and it's never ending we can play so many different roles so many different people so many different animal lives, so many this and so much of that, just to have these experience and it's just a play of life, right? And so when you understand this, you live from a whole different perception, right? It's not the identity, the me, the ego, who's living in the false illusion when we're attached to that. 
And that happens at certain parts of our lives, you know, so we're playing out these roles, right? And so um, we never know when something's going to happen because it's been wiped from us, right? Otherwise, you know, what's the purpose in it, right? So number seven, number seven, collective action is choice. So we all choose our roles and action. Um, what is choice? Some might call this free will. And so we create our experience, nothing is being done to that you didn't do yourself, meaning that you haven't signed up for, uh, just you don't remember it. Number eight. Number eight, there is no duality. It only seems that way as it is the opposite streams of consciousness, one and one on both sides. But there's no duality. We just say it that way, which, but it makes it's not real. Um, this is how we refer to it as. Um, which is either the fullness and the emptiness of it, which is a collective screen of possibilities for all is positive, not negative. Everything is for the good, right, is what that's saying. And then you have either the fullness or the emptiness, which is either the dark and the light or the love and the emptiness of it, the, the fullness or the, the lack, you know, it's either or, right? And so there is never any duality. It's just the opposite ends of the stick, what people like to call duality, but there isn't any really. Um, because one doesn't attract the other, it's, it's totally opposite, right? So um, duality would be the streams of consciousness within it, which is the capabilities that's creating its form of the opposite ends of the stick, right? So that's a misconception. Um, so there's no negative because everything is for you, only the way you're choosing to see it from, which is your experience from where it is that you are, which is an optical illusion, of the experience that is actually empty of itself in fullness. Uh, so you are in lack of nothing, only its existence for it or of it, where you have everything. Right? You, uh, you already have everything. It's just your your emptiness of it that you feel you don't have it is the creation of it that brings it to you into your experience. So I'm without a car. I need a car to do this, to do that. So I'm going to manifest a car to do that and to do that, right? So it's just bringing that into, we have everything, right? We, we have everything. Everything is, is given to us. Um, we have all our tools, tools, our psychic abilities, everything that we need to do what we need to do in this world, right? So everything is for us. Nothing is against us. We only make it against ourselves, right? And so, and that is what's called the bipolar, not the I polar like your disease or illness but the bipolar opposite ends um, of the stick existence that which is and that which is not together which is by the way being of the lack of it which to the fullness and because you already are you just feel empty of it because you're just not seeing it right and so it's the feeling of lack in existence of it so you're not seeing of it, so you think that you are without it. Uh, so it stimulates the lack within you that you don't have it, but you lack nothing. You're just being cut off from seeing it, which is the illusion of being empty uh, of it sometimes, or something that is not present in your life that you get to choose from, which is the streams of consciousness. The lack of and the fullness of the dimensions and realms and realities of being, meaning you are of it, but you don't experience it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? And, and um, Abraham Hicks talks about that, right? And so you have everything, it's just the illusion of it, and it's getting yourself to that realization of it, that you have it all, right? And you really don't need anything. Um, it's just the experience of having, uh, which just makes this a lot more experience, experienceable, you know, to have the things that we want and enjoyable, right? And so it's the manifest things along the way um, but basically there it's the streams of consciousness there's no duality and it's it's the the fullness which is having the uh, the act absence of it which is lack and so and then you have all the different streams in between which is on your way to the fullness right and so from the lack of it right and so those are the streams of consciousness so if you have love and then no love the lack of love you're going to want, and if you're wanting love, you're going to get to love, but you have to go along the streams of conscience to love, right? So 
you're going to have those different experiences along the way. It's just different consciousness because there's only one of this, one of this, one of this, one of this, one of this. There's all, it's all one, right? It's all one in one. There's never two. There's only one Laura. There's only one, one of everything, right? And so there's only one. I don't know how else to say it. There's just one of everything, right? And so everything changes by a minute difference which is reference to itself. And so it always changes, but it's never the same. Um, and that's the consciousness. And this is what they're giving me um, to help explain it. So there's only a difference in reference to it, even if it's just a mi minute shade and color, or if it's a pigment, or if it's something else. Um, but it's an intelligence that changes it by a micro minute. Um, of experience from what we're seeing to what we're not. And so it changes throughout time, which is an evolution of itself from one to the other to get to the other, which is the fullness of it, if that makes sense. And that's how they're explaining it to me. Um, so, but yeah, there's no duality. Um, it may appear as though you have your hot and your cold, or you're either this one or that one, or you're doing this and that, um, which is the opposite of it. it it's it is the opposite, but it's the opposite extremes, right? And so it's not a duality, right? And so try to take that word out of the, the, the realm of being um, and then just call it what it is. And they're just giving me chills. So um, just basically, you know, look at it as that's how you get out of the realm of duality is to not see it as duality, right? And so just see it as one of everything, right? Because otherwise you're going to keep creating duality within yourself. Um, it's just the emptiness or the which is a lack and then or the fullness which is the have right and so the lack of and the fullness of the dimension and the realms of being meaning you are of it but you don't experience doesn't mean it doesn't exist right it doesn't mean it isn't it is just the illusion of having or not having but it always is uh, there so you have everything you, you need so you never need to go without anything right so all right, let's go on to number nine. All right, number nine, this is a fun one. Uh, I kind of already talked about this a little bit. Your soul spirit doesn't fully merge with the body until uh, average age between six and seven years old, but a lot of people think it's at conception or at birth. Um, when the child generally starts to fully forget who they truly are in this realm. So that's when you fully become immersed with the body as a spirit and soul into the body because that's where the dimensions start to shift and change right it's not at birth you're just integrating over time period right your full integration and dimension is around six and seven when you start to forget who you truly are on all different levels right and so you really think that you are the human right the ego course of action so um, and I've had that experience, and so I've done that through a couple sessions, and I've had that information come to me, not only through channelings in the book, but through experience. Um, so um, it becomes merged at that age, and we integrate and take up the reincarnation from other lives and start having experiences that we need to have, right? Such as I don't belong here, the feeling of overwhelmingness, stress, anxiety, uh, whatever the past lives that we need to start working on will start coming in and we'll start to see it. And so I don't fit in past life or memories come up. And so we start to, at that point, start working on uh, what we need to work on, right? What we've created to come in and play out in this role. So remembering other things that we're meant to work on in this life. And so the soul spirit, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, in the body of your child is not the child it is an incarnate soul and spirit of other lives that can be anything, right? And that may be difficult to think about how your child is because your child is just the, um, the, the unborn body, right? It's the, it's the body, it's the form, right? And then it's the spirit and the soul that takes up the body that becomes itself, right? Whatever that was prior to <laughs> that you've agreed to give birth to and to uh, incarnate that soul. Right? So we've agreed to incarnate souls within our, our body, if that makes sense. Um, 
And so it is religious theology and false belief systems that it is your child <laughs> uh, fully and to believe that it is by the age and conception of birth and or um, when you give birth, conception or birth, which is false. So it's all an illusion to think you are parents, um, you're just parenting, um, that you're married, that you are who you are as human form when you're actually shedding the body um, after this, right? So just think about it from that perspective, right? So if I'm shedding the body, who am I really then, right? What, 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 what is this all about, right? Start thinking and asking yourself questions, right? And then so that you are your identity of what and who you are that you do, where you are and where you're coming from and where you're born, right? You're not all these things. These are just identity to play out your role. Um, you're, you're not these things and people that we believe what we are, right? But we're told that is. And so when we forget ourselves, which is a spirit and soul, then we think we are because we're taking that up, right? And so that's when the start, the role in the play starts. And so these are just roles uh, that you're playing out, right? Um, that we've agreed upon, right? That you're taking up and believing in. And so nothing has meaning, but only what you give to it, right? And so when you're in, in the role in the time frame of your belief systems and your, um, your identity, your ego, you know, these are what the concepts are. But when you step out of it, it's not. Right? And so through my awakening, evolving, and going through my own stuff and reconnecting and going uh, back home, bringing through the information, channeling these writings, uh, the information awareness, you know, I have that out, outer side view of everything, right? And so no longer uh, being in the ego or the identity, uh, identity, but shedding that and having that integrated, you know, I am on the outside of that. So... I have the information and, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, bring any suffering to my life, um, having that. And so it's just when we're out, when we're in the view of our person, you know, oh, I, I am from here. Uh, I'm from my mother. I am from New York. I, I am a doctor. I am this where we live in that because you're I am, right? So you're calling yourself to that, uh, which it is that you are, right? You're giving that meaning and purpose to yourself, right? You're identifying that and bringing it to yourself, right? And that's where you're living from instead of your true source, which is the non-illusion, which is the truth, right? And let's go, hopefully that was helpful. I don't know if that helps to explain it, but you're not your identity, your ego, and anything that you believe that you are. This is just a role in the play, right? So just kind of look at it that way. Um, going on to number 10. So number 10, <laughs> um, and I told this to somebody and they were like, oh, they didn't want to hear it because they worked so hard in their life for everything that they have. Um, but it's suffering when you have that attachment to it. and. Um, uh, even the Buddhists will talk about these topics that I'm talking about, you know, and so um, it, it's in a lot of the the scriptures of different lineages, um, and so it's not just stuff that I'm channeling and just coming and picking up out of nowhere, you know, it's things that I myself have been through, it's through the teachings that are out there. Um, these are, you know, everything that we don't know of when we don't have these teachings and experiences because that's what we think or what we've been told, right? And so that's religion and concepts and perceptions from that reality, but it doesn't exist and it doesn't hold, right? So because obviously we wake up out of it, right? And so that shows that it's not true, right? So if you wake up out of something, it's no longer true, right? And so that's what the awakening is, right? But number 10, you don't own anything. Um, it's all temporary in this realm of being. It's a creation and play. Um, so there's nothing that exists beyond this realm. Um, whatever. And it says, so you, can so you can't take it with you. So what happens on earth stays on earth. But you take the experience and the lessons with you, right? And so that would lead you to the reincarnation of the next life experience called reincarnation. Um, so... We don't really own anything. We don't own our children. We don't own these bodies. We don't own um, our lifestyle. We don't own our health. 
our stress, our worry. We don't own any of that, but we take it on as like if we did, right? And so we identify with it and we make it ours. And so we experience it. Um, we don't own our houses. We don't own our cars. We don't own our lands. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm Native American, so I own this land. No, you don't. You're only here temporary. And I'm not trying to bash Native American because I had a Native American life and I have Native American spirit guides. And um, I've been a shaman, uh, so many different things, but it's our attachment to these things when we think we're, we're through our identity or who we are as the, the person, the concept, the ego, but we don't own all these things. These are all just temporary, right? We, we, and to actually fully enjoy them, we have to look at it from that point of view that it's not mine. And so a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, the government wants to make it where, <laughs> you know, you don't own anything. You don't own it anyway, right? It's it's the suffering that we put on it, perception uh, that we think is real, that we own everything. You know, this is my land, this is my house, this is my car. You don't take it with you, my friends. So it's not. <laughs> Sorry to dismay you with that. Anyway, and I was only going to do 10, but they said do 11, right? One, 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 because all is one. So let's do 11. All right, guys, here's one, one, number 11. There's only one commandment, and not only are they giving me this to, to say, um, because there's really no commandments but one. And that is in a lot of scriptures, but it's also true. Um, there's only one commandment. Everything else is a to-do list, right? Um, so basically, it says there's only one commandment, and that is to be love. And this is going to be in my my book, The Way Through uh, Discourse. So a lot of these things and teachings are in there, right? So you can purchase them. They're all going to be on Amazon.com. Um, and so that is to be love. So that is your one commandment. And in being love, you have no problem, right? Thereby, your only commandment is love of itself, to be of it, which is to worship itself and practice of itself, not its ego, but its true self, right? Because source is love, the one divine connection, um, which is synonymous, uh, synonymous uh, uh, to who you are, right? Uh, it, the experience isn't who you are. It's just what you're playing out in life, to, to have the experiences of that which is love and that which isn't, which is lack, which is not duality, it's the opposite ends of the stick. And so the reason um, that they're saying that the only commandment is love is because everything else comes from love. Meaning you don't need to do anything for anything else because when you think about it and you're in the space of love, what are you manifesting? You're, you're ma manifesting for a lot from lack, you're not manifesting from anger, hate, or um, not good enough. You're manifesting from that space, right? And so everything else caught comes from that, right? So you don't have to do anything else, just be love. And so on the way to love, we have uh, what's called the spiritual hierarchy, right? Not the human hierarchy or the social hierarchy, where the commonality of like, you know, you have your government and then all the way down to the poverty, right? So again, you don't have duality, but you have your streams of consciousness within all things, right? And so to be a part of the true source, the true wisdom, the knowledge that you are is to be love, right? And so all else is a checklist that doesn't fit into love, right? And so for those who are not being love, you want to follow the other commandments, which is given by religion. And this is part of the hierarchy, which is going to be in my books. Um, and so having that in the books, it'll show you the level of hierarchy, which we're talking about. And so it's not the human construct, but the, the consciousness, which is a spiritual construct. Um, the laws that are governing uh, the hierarchy of the spiritual community, right? Uh, which is the allowing of it to uh, manifest and create, right? So um, a lot of people don't know about this, right? And so that's why there's only one commandment, which they say Jesus left for us, but this is something that we should all know when we're divinely connected to ourselves, just to be loved, right? Um, and he just brought that in to remind us of that, uh, to bring 
to just be love because everything else comes from them. Because if you're being love, you can't be hate. If you're being love, you can't be from a place of uh, murdering and killing, right? Because you're just in that space of love. And so everything else comes from that. And that's how it is the hierarchy um, of creation, So, which is the laws. And so when you're in your human construct, um, you're wanting to follow the, the other commandments <laughs> that's given by religion and law, which is the human law, right? So further away from source you get, which is love, you have your different hierarchy. So you have your uh, spiritual commandments, the only love, the only commandment is love, which is source, right? And then, so if you're not going to be loved, the next comes your religious commandments. Don't kill, don't steal, don't, <laughs> you know, do all these things. Because if you're not being love, which you don't have to worry about doing all those things, because in that space of love, you don't do those things. You just automatically be love, which is, you know, being love. And so in love, you don't do those things. But when you're not being love, you have all these other commandments to go by. And so then you have that hierarchy. And then the further way you get into more of the human consciousness, you have the laws of the societal structures, right? And so jail, imprisonment, and things like that. Because the further away from love, the absent of love that you are, which is the, um, the other side of the stream of consciousness, so the lack of love, um, the further away you are more in your human consciousness, the ego, and that's where all the things happen, um, in life that maybe we're on the opposite end of the stick creating the things that we don't want which is the play and so you have those contracts uh, you know are you what are you doing in those uh, energies and vibrations are you um, abusing people are you harming people <laughs> you know and then of course you have your societal uh, uh, laws right so you have jail time and then you have all this other stuff that is from those actions that you take. So anyway, those are different constructs, right? From the source to the physical human form, you have those constructs, right? So if that makes sense, it's a hierarchy, right? And so um, the level of hierarchy is not of the human construct, not the spiritual constructs, which is the laws. And so that governs the bodies. Um, so the bodies of the spiritual being down to the human being, right? So we have those. So what that means is if you can't be loved, follow the other commandments that was put out there for you as a way to exist in the world, to be of it, you know, within ourselves. So don't kill, don't cheat, don't worship other gods before me, which is source. Um, and do, you, do the next best thing that you can do from where it is that you are, which is on the way to love, for it is all the law of love that is the one being, right? So, but if you can't be it, do, do what you can. <laughs> Um, from where it is that you are. Um, because when you are love, these other things don't matter because it's not going to be an issue for you because love doesn't do those things, right? Because love brings all other things in alignment to itself, which is the manifesting of all the things that we're wanting, right, and enjoying. And so it is when you are to love that you um, have all the things, not the other things, right? Because you can't manifest those things from where you are, right? And so the commandment to be loved is the only thing that you have to do. You don't have to worry about anything else. And so set your goal on, on every day of being loved and don't have to worry about anything that isn't in alignment with love, but you have to know what love is. And so to know what love is, you have to be the opposite of it, right? Which, which is the end of the other end of the stick. So have those experiences to be of love because a lot of people who think they're being loved, they're interfering with other people's lives, they're um, forcing people to do certain things, you know, and that's not love. <laughs> it may be love from your, where you are in your construct, but it's not love, it's not divine love, right? And so to know source love, you have to be, have those experiences to know what it isn't, so you can be of it, so you know what it is, right? And so that's why we have the opposite end of the stream, um, so we can have the experience, knowledge, and wisdom of what love isn't right? It's the teachings, right? And so, because <laughs> um, when you're in love, you're, uh, you're manifesting from that place and whatever that is to you, because like, you know, the parents, they can be, they can love you, but they may not be in the space of love as source would be in love. It's just from their way of being it, you know, and they can love you from a hard place to bring you hard lessons, or they can be in the stream of conscious of love that, um, you know, there being true love, which is source love, which is fully acceptance of who you are, no matter what. 
and there's different streams of love that we are so it's all love it's just different streams of love right and so it's it can be a lesson a love of lessons or it could be a love of acceptance you know different levels of love um, but that's all that there ever is right and it's just from where we are um, so uh, commitment to be love is the only thing you have to do and so set your goals every day to be love divine love connected and so you don't have to worry about anything else that isn't in alignment with love because it's a highest vibration right and so for if you are vibrating from all things, which is source instant manifestations, you know, of that, right? So that's where instant manifestations come in is when you're vibrating at the highest level of vibration that you can be, which is love, right? Uh, source love, um, which is of the one true God, which is you, who you are, and the one true source together in alignment to itself, which is all things that come from that level of awareness, right? Which is the truth. And so you live for your truth. Um, which is the true love <laughs> and abundance, health, wellness, and wealth, right? So you receive all those things, right? And so there's no suffering involved in that. Hope that makes sense. Gives you a little bit more um, explanation on why there's that only one commandment and why that was the only commandment that Jesus actually gave, not all these other things, because when you're not in that love, you're in the other streams of consciousness, which is heading towards the lack of love on those streams of consciousness, which is a level of love, but not the, the love that sources love, if that makes sense. So And so that is the hierarchy, right? And so that, again, is going to be in the book. Um, if you have any questions on that, definitely reach out. Um, but hopefully that makes sense and will explain it a little bit better, you know? And so that's why there is only that, that one um, commandment, which is to be love. And so uh, your only commandment is love of itself, to be of it, which is to worship self and practice of itself, which is not the ego, again, but source, because source is love, right? And so your practice of yourself in alignment with source is to be love, right? And not the opposite end of the stick. Um, and so thereby you are of your own religion when you practice love. So you don't need one outside of you, which is the source that's living, the living God because you are the living God, because your source is within you and you're connected, right? The living God of yourself, which is the creation, um, which is in him to be one too that is or is not of itself, to be that which is. So you cannot be of itself that which isn't, but to be of that which is in him to itself, the alignment with all things. And so you don't need to do anything else for all else comes from love, right? And so that is the highest because it is the highest form in him to the one that can be obtained. And so that's your highest consciousness that you can obtain within your lifetime, um, which is basically the goal of life, is to reach the states of higher being, which is love, and that source, your divine connection, is what that's saying. Um, and so basically, that is your only thing. And so if you think about it, when you go to do your life review, you shed all this, right? It's a shedding of it uh, beyond this realm of physical. If you don't do that in this lifetime, in this realm of physical, you do it beyond here. But then you can come back, right? Um, to uh, obtain that within your physical life form, which is basically the view that we're trying to obtain here um, in this physical form is to be love. And that's how you how you can do that is through this. Um, it's, it's the faster way of evolving. Um, but if you think about it, when you go to the other side, uh, you're shedding all of this um, perception and reality. And when you get from the physical form, you go to the, um, the void, and then you go into the light with the light bringers, and then you go and you, your energy shifts and you go through the healing uh, and the shifting of the energy, clearing, cleansing, you're in then the space of love, which is source, right? Your divine connection. Um, then you do your life review, right? And so you can do that here now in this lifetime, right? And so your only commandment, just as it is there, is to be love, right? Into the form. Um, it's intentional to be in love here, right? And it's just automatic there because you're automatically going into that consciousness that's already there. And so when we're there, you know, we already are. It's here that we're not. We're on the opposite stream of it, that consciousness in, his, in this form here, right? Just look at it that way. 
Um, and so you can do it intentionally. And so that is the only one commandment because everything else falls in line with love when you're um, manifesting, right? You look at it from that point of view. If you're manifesting, where are you on the stream of consciousness? Are you being love, higher vibrations? Have you learned about manifesting, right? What Abraham Hicks talks about. Um, because wherever you are is what you're going to have in your life, whatever you're bringing to you, which is the law of attraction. And you're going to manifest from that where you are. And so if you are in the higher states of being, your love and everything else comes from that. And so you, it's not, you don't have, you have everything, you don't have nothing, if that makes sense. Because everything else comes from that. And so you don't really have to do anything. It'll just come to you um, in your manifesting of being love which is the enlightenment. And so enlightenment is the highest form of being. Right? So I'm going to leave it there, but a lot of this is going to be in the book um, that I have and the videos, and I'm just going to be piecing it, you know, little video, video by uh, video. So um, check out the different videos on there, and it'll help to bring a lot of this together for you. Um, and that's the goal of having the videos um, to share in the knowledge through the book that I'm channeling, what I'm, I'm connecting to, and which is the higher streams of consciousness to bring this information um, in, in for you, you know, um, to help clear out all, all the misconceptions and the realities and the belief systems. Also to help people evolve through your own knowing and to connect you back to your true selves, right? Because that's where you're going to get the truth. Um, not from the perceptions, realities of others, because that's only from where they are, right? And so I can only take you to a certain level because that's where I am. And they can only take you to a certain level because that's where they are. And whether it's true for you, it's not, it's really up to you whether you want to accept it or not, right? And so that's just basically what it is. That's just how it is. Like one of my teachers was my teachers at that time because that's what I needed, but then it no longer resonated with me what they were teaching. So moved on and another teacher came and so that's what i needed from that teacher and that teacher and that teacher but when you stay with, with the same teacher you know it, it's you can only go so far so you have to evolve because everybody is at a different place and a different time and a lot of places want you to just stay where they are right so a lot of rigid religions that's why they don't want you to go other places right so you just stay where you are and so you're there for forever as you're in this lifetime but anyway, that's pretty much uh, the 11 uh, topics we wanted to get out there today for you in this video. But definitely check out the other videos. It does have other information in the books on Amazon.com. And I do do sessions, so um, reach out to me for that if you have anything individually that you want to work on. Um, definitely leave some comments below or questions, and I'll be able to do some videos and answer those. All right, happy journeys. Have a great day, and thanks for tuning in.